I'd like to welcome my uh, guests to the uh, program. Uh, actually, I'm going to start off with my first question and uh, starting it off uh, in London. Uh, Washington should abandon its Cold War mentality. Now, this is according to Beijing. Uh, what do you think? Does the U.S. have a Cold War mentality? Well, certainly some of the recent developments do have echoes of the Cold War nuclear standoff of the 1970s and early 1980s between the United States and the then Soviet Union. Um, clearly, <coughs> the United States Pentagon feels that the current nuclear arsenal that Washington has is not fit for purpose for the modern age, that it was perhaps fine at the period of what was called mad, mutually, mutually assured destruction when uh, both Washington and Moscow had enough nuclear weapons to wipe each other out and therefore in principle wouldn't use them. Whereas now in the defense review which was announced last month, uh, Washington is saying basically the, the nature of conflict has changed. <coughs> We're no longer targeting terrorism as the big threat to America, but the possibility of conflict with other great powers, notably Russia and China. Thanks so much, Jonathan Fryer, a writer and lecturer out of London, crossing over, uh, actually staying in London with uh, Marcus uh, Papadopoulos, publisher and editor of Politics First. In your perspective, now, according to Iran's President Hassan Rouhani, on the one hand, the U.S. condemns weapons of mass destruction and says it is a crime against humanity, while at the same time wants uh, to upgrade its nuclear weapons. Do you see this as being hypocritical? Yes, I do regard it as being hypocritical. And um, please allow me to make some observations on the Pentagon's new document. Mm -hmm. Firstly, Donald Trump is making good on a promise he made during his election campaign to halt and reverse the Obama administration's reduction in the American nuclear arsenal. And in fact, Mr. Trump wants to make the, new, the American nuclear arsenal the largest and most powerful in the world. Secondly, the state of relations between Moscow and Washington at present is absolutely atrocious. And thirdly, the Pentagon's new document really has the potential to trigger a very serious arms race between Russia and America, which can only destabilize uh, global uh, peace and stability. Now, why are the Americans introducing such a strategy? Well, I would argue for over the last 20 years, the Americans have taken a number of measures to try and subdue Russia, knowing the potential for Russia to resurrect the sort of power it wielded in Soviet times. Now, we can talk about, on the one hand, NATO expansion into Eastern Europe, which commenced in 1999, but also it is very important for me to make reference to something that happened in 2001, because in, two, in late 2001, the Americans informed Moscow that they would be withdrawing from the ABM Treaty, a landmark nuclear reductions treaty signed between Moscow and Washington in 1972. So by the Americans withdrawing from the ABM Treaty, that led to their establishment of the Missile Defense Agency, which resulted in the construction of an American defense shield uh, on Russia's borders, which is partly in Poland, partly in Romania. And that missile defense shield has resulted in a serious violation of the INF Treaty. Okay. So it is very important to remember that this is part of a strategy of the Americans to try and... All right, stay and with me, stay with me, Mr. Papadopoulos. Let me get Jonathan Fryer back in <clears> on <throat> this. Uh, what Washington's uh, nuclear posture review says that Russia must be persuaded that the price is too high for them to threaten a nuclear attack. What does that mean in your, in your perspective? And has Moscow been threatening any country with nuclear weapons? Well, certainly there's been no direct threat of any kind from Moscow to use nuclear weapons against anybody on a first-use basis. The, I think, though, it's important to bear in mind that in Washington there is a feeling, and in some Western European capitals, that some of Russians, Russia's activities along its borders have been uh, disconcerting, to put it mildly. 
um, obviously the occupation of Crimea and incursions into Georgia. But more recently, considerable concern in the Baltic states, Estonia, Latvia, Lithuania, which of course used to be part of the Soviet Union and which have now very much become part of the uh, Western uh, world and the Western alliance. And there is real tension in the Baltic states. I was there very recently. Uh, concerns that possibly Russia will intervene there as it uh, did in Ukraine and Georgia. Um, but there's, all this is, of course, speculation, not based on actual events so far. But as for a nuclear threat, no, no nuclear threat has been made. Marcus, you're shaking your head. Your, your comment on the same question. Yes, let me, um, let me correct the gentleman. There was no Russian incursion in Georgia in 2008. What happened was that Georgia invaded South Ossetia and Russia went to the aid of South Ossetia. Georgian aggression was accepted by pretty much every government in the world. Even the Americans privately admitted that Mikhail Saakashvili had acted very, very antagonistically and very dangerously. Secondly, there was no occupation of the Crimea. The people of the Crimea responded to the overthrow of a democratically elected government in Kiev in February 2014. They reacted because they were terrified by the sort of people who had come to power in Kiev, neo-fascists, neo-Nazis. The people of the Crimea held a referendum on breaking away from Ukraine and rejoining Russia. In regard to the Baltic states, the Baltic states are members of NATO and Russia understands that an attack on one uh, member of NATO means that the rest of uh, NATO have to come to the aid of that state. There is no Russian threat to Eastern Europe. There is no Russian threat to the Baltics. What we are seeing is an America which is absolutely determined at all costs to defend and strengthen its global hegemony. And let me just make a point, which pretty much every person in the world knows, but you don't find it that much in Western media. The only country to have used, to have dropped an atomic bomb with devastating effect, having killed hundreds of thousands of people, was America okay. when they dropped bombs on Hiroshima and Nagasaki. Let's not forget about that. Well, yeah, interesting point. What about that, Jonathan Fryer, uh, as our other guest in London, Marcus Papadopoulos, talked about? Uh, we don't hear a whole lot about Hiroshima and Nagasaki. And it's very interesting that the United States then takes the lead in all of this and trying to be like the moral standard and judge when they are the only ones that have dropped the atomic bomb. Uh, they condemn other entities, whether it's peaceful nuclear program or it's actually a uh, nuclear weapon such as North Korea. But on the other hand, they basically do whatever they want. Why is that the case? Well, certainly there is a degree of uh, evident hypocrisy which has been mentioned in that indeed America was the only country ever to use nuclear weapons. But they, that use of nuclear weapons of a, on a scale, we have to say, far lower than some of the weapons that are available today. The damage would be much, much more to human life and to infrastructure. Uh, there, nonetheless, since 1945 and the use of those weapons, there has been internationally an attempt, as you know, through the um, uh, United Nations and various treaties to limit the um, proliferation of nuclear weapons. Uh, at the moment, officially, you have the five permanent members of the Security Council, including Russia, China, and indeed Britain, uh, plus a few other unofficial uh, nuclear weapon holders, uh, such as um, Israel, though we don't know how many, and of course North Korea has been developing its own program and testing missiles. And it's interesting, of course, the, one of the main reasons China has spoken out so strongly against the latest development in America is because of North Korea, because there has been extremely bellicose language from Washington towards Kim Jong-un mm. in Pyongyang and talk on both sides of the possibility of nuclear engagement. And that would be catastrophic for East Asia. Well, uh, Marcus, the new generation of nukes that the U.S. want, according to the Nuclear Posture Review, 
should be smaller, low-yield atomic weapons. What exactly does that mean, in your opinion? Do you think that Washington is trying to pave the way uh, to use these weapons more readily and, and normalize it by saying that uh, these aren't uh, as destructive as the others? I wouldn't necessarily, necessarily subscribe uh, to that theory. I believe whilst the Americans are very dangerous players on the international stage, at the same time, uh, they realize that if they were to employ that sort of strategy, in particular against Russia, it could result in an all-out nuclear war between the two nuclear superpowers. And in an all-out nuclear war between Moscow and Washington, neither side would win. The Americans certainly wouldn't win, and the Russians certainly wouldn't win. So I believe this, this, this talk by the Americans could be a way of trying to intimidate the Russians, trying to frighten the Russians, trying to deter the Russians. But I can only um, emphasize the point that Russia in 2018 is a completely different Russia to that of the 1990s. Russia is reasserting its influence and power that it had in Soviet times across the globe. Yes, most notably in the Middle East and North Africa, but in other places as well, in Southeast Asia and Latin America. And the Americans will not tolerate that. They do not wish to live in a world where they have to share power with another uh, superpower. Well, what does that mean? Uh, they do not want to live in a world where they have to share power. Staying with you, Marcus, I mean, what exactly does that mean? So what does it mean that they're going to do? And we see uh, mm -hmm. uh, entities like Russia and China and others uh, up and coming and, and getting stronger by the day. So mm -hmm. what does that mean for Washington? What do they want to do to them? Well, I think for Washington, the golden age was in the 1990s and in the early 2000s. Following the collapse or the dissolution of the Soviet Union, America reigned supreme in the world. It was able to do what it wanted in the former Yugoslavia. It was able to go into Iraq unchecked. And of course, some years later, it was able to intervene in Libya. During the 1990s and the early 2000s, there was no other country in the world which could stand up to America. Russia in the 1990s went into meltdown, economic, political and military meltdown, though the Americans always understood that the Russians had the potential, Russia had the potential to pick itself up and to regain its lost superpower status. So that is why, that, that, that is why we, it can, we can account for the Pentagon's um, uh, military doctrine, whereby they wanted to expand NATO into Eastern Europe to ensure that Russia would never have a foothold in Eastern Europe. And by weakening Russia in mm -hmm. Eastern Europe, uh, the Americans believed that they could, they could weaken uh, Russia okay. internationally. All right. Well, well Jonathan Fryer, uh, Iran's foreign minister, Mohammad Javad Zarif, has tweeted about this issue that the, this U.S. policy document risks bringing humankind closer to annihilation. Uh, what do you think about that statement? Well, I, I understand the sentiment behind the uh, assertion or the, the, the speculation that that uh, might be the situation that obviously uh, we get nearer and nearer to the possibility of some awful nuclear uh, conflagration. Only uh, quite recently, the, the international clock towards nuclear war or nuclear annihilation was brought to two minutes to midnight, which is pretty alarming. But I think we shouldn't lose focus of what's really one of the core issues of the subject today. And that's that the, there is a, a Ex uh, experimentation and development of uh, new generation nuclear warheads and nuclear systems both in America and in Russia and one of the reasons that the uh, defense secretary has pushed through the um, nuclear posture review um, has been because of the Russian development of Starus 6 which is a um, 
uh, indirectly guided uh, nuclear torpedo which could reach American shores. I'm not suggesting for a moment that is an intention, but theoretically it could. And that is something which can be guided rather like a drone from <coughs> afar. And the Americans on their side are similarly developing underwater capabilities uh, as well as uh, new smaller nuclear weapons which could be uh, directed very precisely at targets. Now, as I say, certainly, well, at least here in Europe, we all hope that this new development of nuclear weapons will not lead to nuclear annihilation. And indeed, as was made clear from the German uh, statement in the news bulletin just before the program, um, Germany in particular and Europe in general is very concerned by the escalation of tension between what we used to call East and West, and it sounds as though maybe we're entering a new age where we'll have to talk about East and West again. Well, Marcus, what does it say when Washington behaved the way that it does, when we see that uh, on the one hand it, uh, it invokes sanctions against a peaceful nuclear program in Iran, on the other hand, uh, with North Korea, uh, continually being very antagonistic. So the Pyongyang continues to say that they're after nuclear weapons or they have their nuclear program because of the U.S.'s aggression. So what does this all say and the effect that it may have on, on the other countries? I oppose the very existence of nuclear weapons and I am a bitter opponent of nuclear proliferation. But I do understand why the North Koreans have developed nuclear weapons, and North Korea does have nuclear weapons. North Korea feels encircled by America. It feels threatened by America. And Pyongyang knows only too well that the Americans have never attacked, invaded, or bombed a country which has nuclear weapons. So that is why the North Koreans now have a nuclear deterrent. And that is why I do not believe the Americans will launch some form of military attack against, uh, against North Korea. But returning to Russia, which is really the focal point of the Pentagon's new strategy, yes, Russia is modernizing, is strengthening, is enlarging its nuclear arsenal. But why? Action, reaction, because of American actions on, on the western borders of the Russian Federation. If you take a map out of Europe from the Baltic Sea to the Black Sea, the borders of the Russian Federation are littered with NATO member states. Okay. In conjunction with and an American... I really hate to interrupt you, but we are smack out of time. Appreciate you being with us, both of you. Out of London, Mr. Marcus Papadopoulos, publisher and editor, Politics First, and Mr. Jonathan Fryer, writer and lecturer. And as always, viewers, we appreciate you being with us on another debate. I'm Marcia Hashimi signing off for myself and all the crew right here in Tehran. See you next time.